Now, there are many other things I could show you with the physics of heat, but um, let me go on and show you something that involves both heat and sound. I have here a long um, copper pipe, and it's connected back here to the source of natural gas. So I'm going to turn that on, and on the top of this pipe are several hundred very tiny holes. And so the natural gas comes out those holes, and if I strike a match, I can make a nice wall of flame. Now this is very interesting, isn't it? Because on one end of this pipe is a loudspeaker, very much like you would have on your stereo set at home. And this loudspeaker is connected back here to what we call an audio oscillator. And this audio oscillator is at a frequency of about 600 hertz, or cycles per second. And you can see that on the meter in the front. And when I turn it up, you can hear the sound. And you can also notice that the flame is not uniform anymore. It's big in certain places and small in other places. And that's an indication that, in fact, sound is a form of wave. And so uh, the pressure of the wave is big in certain places and it's small in other places. And in fact, this gives you a measure of the wavelength corresponding to a sound wave. And in fact, when we turn the pitch or frequency up, you notice the distance between the waves gets shorter and shorter. And that's a very important property of any kind of wave. As the frequency of the wave gets higher, the wavelength gets shorter. And so um, uh, that's an example of a sound wave, but we're using heat to demonstrate it. So that's uh, a very interesting uh, demonstration. But of course, you don't find instruments like this in a science laboratory. There are many better ways to measure uh, sound waves.